If you have been listening very closely, you might have gotten a clue from the scripture readings that today is Trinity Sunday. In churches across the country and around the world, preachers are stepping up to the pulpit and doing their very best to unravel the mysteries of this difficult doctrine. They are talking to people about God in three persons like an apple has skin and flesh and seeds, or like a molecule of H2O can exist as water, ice, or steam. They are searching out the most appropriate metaphors they can find, but in the end, their sermons will leave some people cold. Just like the little boy who whispered to his mother, do you mean to say that God is like a chunk of ice? Hmm. While I was on vacation last week, I mentioned to my friend Patrick McCoy, a minister, that I was going to be preaching on this subject. And after a long, thoughtful pause, Patrick said, what is the human itch that is scratched by the doctrine of the Trinity? That's a good question. Does it make any difference to our everyday lives to speak of God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Does it ever cause us to sing holy, holy, holy in the shower in the morning? That's why I like the metaphor suggested by the 7th century theologian John of Damascus and printed in today's order of worship. The one in which Father, Son, and Spirit are pictured holding hands and dancing around together in a circle. That metaphor doesn't speak of how the three persons of the Trinity exist so much as it speaks of how they relate. In John's understanding, the Trinity isn't the dancers, but the dance, the leaping, whirling energy of God's activity, which somehow always remains open to us. Father, Son, and Spirit are constantly reaching out to us, inviting us to join this dynamic dance. They are moving so quickly that you can't tell whose hand is whose, but it doesn't matter. If you just take a deep breath and grab hold, you will be drawn in to the most invigorating dance ever performed, the most life-changing relationship you can imagine. And yes, you might find yourself staggering into the shower the next morning, still smiling and humming, holy, holy, holy. The Trinity is relational. God Almighty is inviting us into relationship. And if we can't join hands with the Father, then maybe we can join hands with the Son. And if we can't join hands with the Son, then maybe we can join hands with the Spirit. God comes to us in different ways, but in every way God makes it clear. He wants us for His own. And that is an itch that needs to be scratched. It was Henry David Thoreau who said that most men lead lives of quiet desperation, but almost anybody in this room could tell you what it's like to be lonely, what it's like to reach out when no one reaches back in return. The doctrine of the Trinity is a way of saying that God is always reaching out toward us, always hoping that we will reach back toward Him. It is a way of saying that we never have to be lonely again. God wants us for His own. It is a very tender, very intimate invitation, and in that sense, not much different than a wedding proposal. I used to watch the Cosby Show on television, and one of my favorite episodes was the one in which Claire Huxtable teaches her daughter's new boyfriend, Elvin, a lesson about marriage. She has just offered to bring coffee for Elvin and for her husband, Cliff, when Elvin says, I didn't think you did that. Did what, she asks. You know, serve. And she says, you mean as in, serve my man? And he says, yeah. There is a 
pregnant pause after this. <clears throat> but you can tell by the look on Claire's face what kind of response she is about to give. Finally, she says, let me tell you something, Elvin. Look, I am not serving Dr. Huxtable, okay? That's something that goes on in a restaurant. Now, I am going to bring him a cup of coffee, just like he brought me a cup of coffee this morning. And that, young man, is what marriage is made of. Give and take, 50-50. And if you don't get it together and drop this macho attitude, there is not going to be anybody who is ever going to bring you anything, anywhere, anytime, anyplace, ever. <laughs> now, she says... <clears throat> What would you like in your coffee? <laughs> and Elvin says, uh, maybe I could bring you some coffee. <laughs> I often tell people that story when they come to me for premarital counseling. And what I tell them is that Claire almost had it right. But marriage, rather than being a 50-50 proposition, is a 100 hundred proposition. If you decide that it's 50-50, then you are always going to be watching your partner to see if he lives up to his end of the bargain. And the first day he does 49% instead of 50, the relationship changes. I mean, the next day you do 49%, and then he sees that and does 48, and then you do 48, and then he's down to 47, and the gap gets wider and wider until eventually neither of you is doing anything for the other. In a hundred, hundred relationship, you don't have to do that kind of mental bookkeeping.